Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see as I'm shooting b-roll of it, uh, we're going to be taking a look at my Amtrak Superliners, and as you can tell by the title, we're going to be installing lights in them. Right now there should be some b-roll going on of, of them running around the layout, uh, dark. You know, let's install some lights in this. And I also had quite a few of you guys asking about it in the, in the review of the uh, transition sleeper, so what I decided to do was I decided let's go ahead and install these lighting kits. Now I've discovered a couple of things, uh, so as we go along the video I'm going to explain a couple of, of my findings and some stuff that kind of um, maybe you should watch out for that wasn't said in anything that I was looking at on how to do this. So let's go ahead and jump into this video right now. Okay guys, as you can see here we've got the uh, lighting kit now. Uh, I don't have a um, lounge car at the moment. What I do have is I have a transition sleeper, a regular sleeper, a and a diner. And all of those three, which are sitting right here, as well as the um, coach, will all use this same lighting kit. I think that the, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that the um, Lounge uses a different one, um, but it's kit 7-504 from Kato. Currently, uh, I could not find this uh, on the Kato website. They say they're sold out. I can't find it on Train World either, so I had to go to uh, eBay to get this, um, but I saw plenty of them on eBay, so if you're looking for this, there, eBay is a great place to pick these up. Getting right on into it, um, I have already installed... Um, into the transition sleeper, this kit, because I wanted to make sure that I could do it before I tried to do it uh, on camera. So it's not that difficult, but there's a couple of little tricks that I hadn't heard anybody talk about that I really, I didn't think about and I had to troubleshoot for a little while, uh, admittedly a little bit too long. So what we're gonna do is I have um, the other two, which is the sleeper and the diner, uh, which a review on the diner will be coming out next week, but the sleeper uh, Is the one I think we're going to do today. So let's just move these out of the way uh, and then I will do the diner off camera so We will go ahead and do the um, regular sleeper today so move uh, Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open the box here for you guys and my camera's on a tripod and I can't see it, so I'm gonna stand up, hold on. Okay, so in the box for this, you get a couple of things. You get this packet right here. You get the, come on, there we go. You get the instruction manual. Um, this I think is some double-sided tape, but I didn't really need it. You don't really need it. There's some stuff that um, holds it in place just fine on its own. Um, you get these two little things, um, which, uh, I'm not exactly certain how this works. I think that these, like, disperse the light or whatever. Um, and then you get this smaller packet of stuff. Um, now these lighting kits will work in any Kato passenger car, I think, except for the Superliner Lounge. Um, but... Uh, that's as far as I, as far as I'm aware, they, they do. But there's a couple of things that you have to keep in mind with superliners. So here, of course, you have your actual uh, lighting board. If my camera would focus, please. You have your actual lighting board here. Um, you have the little framing thing that holds everything together. You have this if you want a incandescent look to your light, uh, to to the light in your car. You can install this. Um, I don't. I want the. Um, I want the, I want it to look. Um, what is it called? Um, fluorescent. Fluorescent lights are installed. So, uh, and then you get, of course, your your little metal tabs here, which uh, I do apologize. This is, of course, a black um, uh, table, and these are kind of a metallic black color. And then you get these two. Um, these two rods. Now, what these do is they go from the bottom of the car to the top of the car, but you'll see that there is a bit of a problem in that they only go up halfway. So these are fine for any car that is like like a viewliner or um, uh, a streamlined something or an old Pullman, whatever, 
Mikado has. I don't really know what they have uh, off the top of my head. So these are actually too short, so uh, we're going to chuck them aside. And in the, in the uh, box of the Superliners, you should have a parts package. This came out of the box of the Superliner kit, not the lighting kit. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you have the Superliner already, then you're good to go. Dumping this out. This has, of course, the stuff for uh, replacing the couplers with a different type of coupler. We can just move that aside for the time being, because what we need are these. Um, these are the same thing as these smaller ones that came with the lighting kit, um, but they're tall enough, as you can see, to reach to the roof of a Superliner. So these are what we need out of that kit, and the rest of the stuff, if you want to change the couplers, you're more than welcome to do so, but the rest of the stuff you can kind of just um, set aside. Uh, we will not be needing that for this. So this is what we're going to need, and I do recommend, I have these, I do recommend a uh, pair of uh, uh, tweezers or grabby things, but really something with a hooked end is what you're really looking for in order to do this. Um, I found that to be the most useful in trying to do this. So, uh, what we're going to go ahead and start off with, before we even get anywhere near the car, what I want to do is I want to... Uh, we want to take a look at this thing. So, uh, looking at this thing, and it's gone fuzzy again, you can see um, there, are, there are two tabs. I've put them at the top of it. Uh, let me get my pointer, which is pretty much just a pipette. Uh, there's two tabs, one there and one there. If we take a look at the... Orient this correctly. If we take a look at the circuit board, you can see there are three holes. There's one in this corner, and then there's two at these corners. Um, it'll only go one way, so you want these two holes to line up with those two nubs uh, and it'll go in just like that so I'm just going to place that in like that and there we go go ahead and make sure that it's pressed down hold on and there we go so now that's all done so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and now they're stuck together there we go we're gonna take these small tabs uh, you should cut. They should. You should have two of these identical small tabs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take them, and you'll see on our lighting kit here. You'll see that there are two shiny pads and two not shiny pads. We want this little tab to go on the shiny pads, um, like this. So as you guys can see, if my camera would focus, it'd be great. As you guys can see, this is how the tab goes. It goes with the um, uh, this little bit, the pointy end, um, at the end. So you just slide that on, and there you go. That's what it looks like on the back. It just kind of goes there. Uh, make sure that doesn't get pushed down or anything. This is how your this is this is the electrical uh, pickup uh, from the. Um, well, well, from these. Um, so this is rather important. This is uh, not squished or anything, and properly. It's gonna it's gonna be very important that this stuff is properly aligned. Okay, and I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side, uh, making sure that it is nice and aligned and everything, and that it's all good. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take uh, these pieces. Now, if I set them uh, oriented the same way, you can see that these pieces are not equal. Uh, they're opposites. So, uh, we need to keep that in mind when placing these. So, these are going to go on. How does this go? This goes, yeah, this is going to be going on this side. So, this is going to be going on this side. So, what you want is you want to slide it on. It has that same... It has that same groove thing for the for the pad to slide on, like the other one had. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and slide that on. And you want to make sure 
you're doing it on the right side so that the long tab thing that sticks out in an L is going to rest on top of the previously placed tab. Now, this is where I'm going to um, this is where I'm going to change things up. So what I'm going to do is temporarily I'm going to take our short pieces and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to go ahead and temporarily slot these in to the little slots um, and we are going to take this oops we're going to take this over to the layout really quickly so that I can show you guys something. Okay, here we are at the layout. I've got the track power off at the moment. But what I want to do is I want to take these two tabs and I want to take them and put them onto the track with track power on so that I can make sure that this thing works. Because what I found whenever I was putting this together, I put it all together, I thought I did it right, and I put the car on the tracks, put everything back together, and nothing happened. So what I, I, I assembled the second one. Um, this is actually the third one that I'm assembling. Uh, I assembled the second one and just kind of did this, this test with it on the tracks just to see, okay, what am I missing? What am I messing up here? Uh, and it, it lit up only whenever I pressed on one of the tabs on the back. Uh, so I had to bend that tab just a little bit to make sure that it would go... Uh, go in and everything uh, and, and have good contact. You want to make sure that everything has good contact before you put it into the car because otherwise you're going to have to take the car completely apart like I did. Um, so don't make the same mistake as me. Uh, that's why I'm, why I'm showing you guys this. I'm going to go ahead and apply track power. So you see where the tab, where the two tabs meet. It's really, really hard to see on camera, but you got to make sure there's nice electrical um, pickup there. Um, so it would be like, it would be like right here and right here. Now you gotta have to, you have to make sure that there's good electrical pickup there. Otherwise you're not, you're never going to get anywhere with this. So I'm going to go ahead and now that we, now that we have track power on, I'm going to go ahead and set this on the tracks. Now I got very lucky this time. Uh, as you can see, I set it on the tracks just like that. And it immediately lights up just fine. The first two that I did this to, I had to bend the uh, uh, the contact just a little bit because they weren't quite working good enough. But I just wanted to show you guys this to make sure that you guys knew that is an issue that sometimes can happen. So it may be a good idea. Uh, don't do it for very long, but it may be a good idea to just briefly test this. Because again... I had this issue. You got to make sure that the, that those pads. If if you if if you think you've done it right and nothing's happening, you may not have good electrical contact on the on those particular pads. So just be careful of that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take us back over to the um, back over to the table now. All right, so back over at the table, we're just gonna remove the short little pads. They were just to test it out. Uh, we will not be needing them. Um, you can do the same thing with the long pads. I just find the short pads to be a little less unwieldy. Uh, so now we're going to set this aside, actually, now that we've ensured that everything is, is functional and everything. And we're going to take our uh, sleeper car, and we're going to go ahead and take it apart. Now, how we do that is actually incredibly simple. Uh, we're going to flip it over on the, on the back. Okay. And we're going to kind of with our fingers kind of pull the the walls apart like that and we're going to grab right here and gently should be able to there we go gently pull up uh, now i'm going to go ahead and just do the same side the same thing on the other side just to make sure we don't break anything on the, on the way out there we go Let's just be careful with it and go ahead and take this out and uh, I'll just set it over here. So now we have the inside of the car. Um, so we have these which on the on the um, camera they kind of look let's see if we can adjust the uh, exposure a little bit more. Uh, on the camera they kind of look 
clear. They're, they're actually red with the light. kind of looks pink. Uh, kind of a pinky orange. Anyway, um, but these things uh, go to these lights here. Now that the car is taken apart, focus, you can see with the light, you can kind of see them go kind of on and off right there as I cover my hand over the light. Um, um, this just kind of helps them do that. So what we're going to do though is we've got to be careful to make sure that we don't break these. Uh, these are only going to be present on Superliners. Um, your other cars are not going to have them. But we're just going to right here where it meets right here uh, we're just going to gently pull it and then we're going to kind of slide it back out this way because it's got to slide out of these holes. Don't just pull straight up. You got to make sure that you go this way. Now sometimes it takes a little bit of force in order to do that so what I would recommend is kind of pulling in a this way direction to begin with when you're pulling these off. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and set those aside and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Uh, now we have to remove the um, upper floor, which could get a little tricky. There's not a whole lot to grab onto here. Let's see if I can just yoink it. Nope. So what? This is why I recommend uh, these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook underneath of there, and I'm going to pull up, and it should be no problem. Try and do the same thing on the other side. There we go. So it should be no problem. So we should be able to just pull this thing up with no problem. Hold on. All right, there we go. Got it. Um, and we can just move this aside as well. And now we have the belly of the beast inside there. So, uh, orientation matters quite a lot here. So you can see in there, there's, um, get my pipette. You can see there's these nubs right here, and then there's these grooves right here. These grooves represent where your, um, where these wings are gonna lay on this, on this, um, board, and these nubs re represent the center of the car. So how it's going to go is, in this case, it's going to be oriented like this. Um, if I'd stop dropping it. So whenever we place it in there, it is going to be oriented uh, like that. Um, in this case. Now if I flip the car around, you may be seeing it like this. So, it just looked like that. So, but we're not ready to do that yet. We're not ready to do that yet. I just wanted to show that to you. What we're going to do first is we're going to take our board and we're going to take our, uh, I'm not sure what these are actually called, but we're going to take these. Uh, there is a groove that runs on one um, flat edge of this uh, on both sides, and we want that to be facing down. We also want the triangle to be at the end of the car. Uh, so we should be able to, with this facing uh, down, we should be able to uh, put it in. And whenever we've put it in correctly, there's nubs at the correct end. So we should be able to hold this like this. And uh, this should not fall out. Uh, and we're just going to do that on the other side as well. And we should be able to hold it here, and nothing should fall out. Uh, if you've done it correctly, then nothing will fall out. Um, now, installing it into the car, what we're going to do is, as you can see, there are these tabs here and here, here and here, and they are going to hold on to the... Um, pieces of, uh, of clear plastic, or whatever this stuff is, I guess it's plastic, yeah. Uh, they're going to hold on to this, um, 
In addition, the grooves that I mentioned earlier are going to rest on these. Um, and whenever this is done, you should also be able to hold the car and shake it around a little bit and it shouldn't fall out. So let's go ahead and do that. It may be difficult to do this on camera, but we're going to give it a shot. You're, of course, going to make sure that these wings fit into those grooves down there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, it, it may take some, some fiddling, but you should be able to get it. There we go. So I've got it to line up right in there, and um, I haven't gotten the other things down, but I should, I've gotten this to line up right. Uh, so that should be good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get these and get them up against those notches that I mentioned, and just carefully press them in. That should do it, and do the same on the other side. There we go. And just make sure that that is done. And then you should be good. Now these do come with this sticky tape, um, but I have not needed that uh, myself anyway. Um, at least not in this car. I, I wonder if they're used in other ones. I'm not certain, but that's a thing. So, but now that this is in, correct orientation and everything, everything should be seated uh, properly. Yep. Uh, it will look like this. Now, I should also be able to... This looks a whole lot more violent on camera, but uh, I should be able to shake it around and it will not fall out. Again, if you've done it correctly, it won't fall out if you uh, turn it upside down and shake it around and everything. That's how you know you've done it um, correctly, uh, but you also have to keep in mind the orientation because uh, it will not fit together correctly um, when reassembling everything if you haven't, uh, if it's not at the right orientation. So, moving along, we're going to go back to the bottom piece of the car. And you can see right there that little copper-colored shiny bit there. That is actually a um, piece of a circuit board that is in the bottom of this uh, to get track power. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our long little metal stick things. I, I have no idea what really to call these. And we're, we're going to take the... Um, rectangular tab end and we're just going to slide it in carefully and we're going to do that on the other side and there you go uh, so now we have that so now it is time for reassembly usually Kato cars will have an arrow um, imprinted into it either right there or right there on the on the car um, and whichever side it is on that is the arrow side and usually I, don't, I think it's on the bottom of these the upper decks on either end you'll have an arrow now I'm not seeing that on this one which is mildly problematic so I now have to figure out how in the crap this thing goes back together there are on, on each side there's this notch right here uh, you can see it's the it's the biggest notch along this side, and that is going to be how you can align this without the arrows. You want to make sure that this pointy bit uh, will stick into um, your wing up here. So in order to do that, you have to have it. Uh, it has to have a path to go up the car, so it's going to go through this notch. So you want to make sure that the notch and the wing are lined up correctly, and that's how you're going to be able to determine how to do this if there's not arrows. But usually, in Kato cars, there's arrows. So we're just going to drop this in and make sure that it um, is seated correctly, goes into those holes that we had to pull it out of. Um, and you should be able to, because it's kind of slippery, uh, kind of a plastic, glossy, you should kind of be able to not pull it out. Um, I mean, you may be able to, but you should kind of have to struggle a little bit to do so. Okay, so it looks like that's good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to slide um, these back in. So how we're going to do that is we're going to make sure that they are um, seated. So we want to make sure that they're sticking out of these holes. So you can kind of see there's one sticking out. It's really hard to do this. Oh, there's both. Uh, it's kind of hard to do this on camera. And then once, once they're both sticking out, we're just going to push them, uh, push the nubs into these holes, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Now, the next thing is where it gets interesting is the final, uh, final assembly of this. 
Okay, so now we're going into the final assembly process. So these two tabs should have, there should be like that groove there, and there's another one there. Um, and these, they have to be oriented correctly. So if you line them up next to each other like this, you should be able to see the, the tabs will line up with the grooves, which in this case they don't. So we'll make sure to uh, turn it around, and now they do. Now, again, most of the time, Kato cars have an arrow. Um, at least new ones do for sure. Uh, they'll have arrows um, pointing you in the right direction, but of course, um, this one doesn't for whatever reason. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that these tabs go into those holes uh, so that they can seat properly into the um, metal tabs on the on the on the board, and then we're going to make sure that the rest of this is seated down properly. And there we go; it's fully assembled. Now I'm going to go ahead and take it um, over to the layout, and I will go ahead and show you it and. Uh, and go ahead and do the the last one. I'll show you. I'll show you all three of them together, um, and I'll meet you guys over there. Okay, guys, I've got it all done. I've got all of all, all three of them assembled. I've already tested them, so I already know that they work because I wanted to make sure that they would. But I'm gonna go ahead and apply track power so you guys can see them. Look at that, guys. That looks so good. Oh man, I think these are some of the best looking lighted cars I have. Um, the other ones are very... They flicker a whole lot more too, but uh, these... Look at that, that is... Smooth, look at that. They do flicker sometimes. Um, they're not perfect, but... They're a whole lot better than uh, older, older lighting kits. Uh, so look at that, that is nice. Um... So, I uh, hope you guys did enjoy this. I did have to fiddle a little bit with the one that I did on camera, probably just because I did it on camera and can't get everything. It's harder to get everything uh, perfect doing it on camera. But, I mean, it, it was... I just had to basically wiggle it a little bit and get it to work. Um, so, but I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, um, uh, do me a favor and go ahead and hit maybe that like button. Uh, in the, at the bottom of the uh, up of the video, uh, I will link in the description the reviews for the transition sleeper, which is that one, and the um, uh, one for the diner uh, will be coming out next week. Once that has been released, I will also put that um, in the description as well. But you can also just hit the bell icon, and you'll get uh, a notification whenever that video is released. That should be coming out next Wednesday. So, I hope you guys did enjoy, and um, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, a run by, maybe even a few with, with these, because they look really, really good. So, uh, enjoy that.